So in this example, we're going to once more take a look at static equilibrium. So let's suppose we have the following example. We have a mass that has three forces acting on this mass. One force is pointing upward along our y-axis, and it has the magnitude of F. Another force is pointing along the x-axis going this way at a 90 degree angle to our first force and it has a magnitude of radical 3 times f. Likewise, a third force is pulling our object m this way and it points this way at an angle of 150 to our x-axis and has a magnitude of 2 times f. Now we want to find what the net force on our object is along the x-axis as well as along the y-axis and then we want to say whether or not our object is in fact accelerating. Remember, if the forces are zero, then the object is, is not accelerating. But if the forces are not zero, if there is some net force, that means <coughs> our object will be accelerating. So we basically want to see whether or not this object is actually in static equilibrium, if it's stationary. So first, let's zoom in on this section here. So in this diagram here, we want to find what the component vectors are of this net force. So this has a magnitude of 2f. And this angle here is 150. That means this angle must be 30 because 150 and 30 must add up to 180 because this x-axis, a straight line, has a measure of 180 degrees. So we make an assumption that this is our y-axis and our x-axis going this way is positive along the x-axis, going this way is positive along the y-axis. So to find our magnitudes of the component vector, we have to basically use our trig functions. So let's first find what the component of the y-axis is. So what's the y component of this 2f force? Well, it's simply 2f, the magnitude, multiplied by sine 30. Why? Well, because opposite over hypotenuse gives us 2f times sine 30 as the magnitude of this side. Likewise, to find the magnitude of this side, we have to use a trig function. We have to use the adjacent over hypotenuse. And that gives us cosine 30 equals adjacent, which is this side, multiplied by a hypotenuse. So we get this side to be 2f multiplied by cosine 30. So we see that the component along the y-axis is 2f times sine 30, and the component along the x-axis is 2f cosine 30. Now notice that these guys are both pointing in the negative direction. That means this is negative, and this is negative as well. So now let's zoom out. Alright, so now we basically want to find, we want to sum up all the vectors along the y-axis and all the vectors along the x-axis. If this gives us zero in both cases, then our object is not accelerating and our object is in static equilibrium. But if we find that our net forces along either direction is not zero, that means our object is in fact accelerating and it is not in static equilibrium. So let's begin with the vectors along the x-axis. So we want to basically sum all the vectors along our x-axis is, which means we have to sum this guy up and we have to sum this guy up. So we just said that going along this direction we find 2f times cosine 30 in the negative direction and the force going this way is radical 3 times f. So let's sum these guys up and see what they give us. So one vector is this guy and the second vector is negative 2f times cosine 30. Now what is cosine 30? Well cosine 30 is, simple, is simply radical 3 divided by 2. So let's replace this with radical 3 divided by 2. We get this guy and now the 2's cancel and we get our force to be negative radical 3 divided by f. There's a negative sign here. And notice what happens. This guy and this guy are exactly the same. These two forces pulling on the object in this direction have the same exact magnitude, but different direction. And that means if we sum up all the vectors along the x-axis, namely these two guys, we get 
this guy minus this guy, which is simply zero. So our object is not accelerating along the x-axis because there's a net force of, of zero. Likewise, let's look at the vectors along the y-axis. Let's do the same exact thing and sum up all the vectors along our y-axis. So, once again, our up direction is positive. So we have vector f going along the y positive direction, so this is positive. Likewise, we have this vector which is pointing downward, so we have this vector going downward. That means it's negative, uh, this guy's negative too. So sine 30 is basically one half. If you plug in sine 30 into a calculator, you, you'll see that this is the same thing as a half. So let's replace a half, or let's replace the sine 30 with a half, and we get negative 2 half times 1 half, the 2's cancel and we simply get negative f. Once again, if we sum up all the forces along our y direction, we see that we get f minus f, which is 0. So likewise, our object, our mass m, is not moving along the y direction. So if it's not moving along the x direction and it's not moving along the y direction because our net forces along both directions are 0, that means our object is not accelerating and that also means that it's stationary. So our object is in fact in static equilibrium.